Number nine. So basically, the, the theme is still like positional sacrifices and unfortunately. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and also, yeah, how, how was huh? it like to play against Kravnik? I assume you played him in a, uh, in a, in a classical game. Yeah, it was a classical game. That was a world team championship in Antalya in Turkey. I was playing first board for Turkey. He was playing first board for Russia. And I think it was like two or three months after he won the World Cup in Tromsø. I think he beat Dmitry Andrikin in the final. Yeah, and so what the mistake that I made in the very, very beginning is that I showed uh, how to say, too much respect on the board. I played the line that I don't play. I played the knight of three, bishop g5, and showing my um, chicken intentions to play e3, c3, knight, knight bd2. But that's not the way to play with white pieces, nor this really suits my style. So I should have played like c4, knight c3 as I usually play with white pieces. No? Was, uh, did you feel that it was the Kramnik was an intimidating player when you faced him uh, over the board? Well, I mean, like, of course, he's like a former world champion and he's like, like one of the greatest players in history. So when I played him for the first time, yes, I showed, again, too much respect because I don't play this way with white. I mean, if you check my other games, I don't play knight as bishop g5. I try to play more aggressive. Like, but again, him, I just, I thought, I mean, I should play solid, I mean, which was a mistake. And I, I think I learned quite a lot from this game. Right. Yeah, actually, so that's should, a good, interesting, uh -huh. good insight that, uh, you know, when you're playing strong players, you should not play passively against them. Because um, not that, I didn't say passively, don't betray yourself. Like I said, yeah, ah, interesting. Well, that's even a deeper insight. Yeah, 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 don't betray yourself. Like, if you're normally an active player, like, I guess if you always play bishop g5 in your whole career, it's okay. But if you're playing a strong player and you're playing a different opening because you're scared of his preparation, it's uh, it's it's sort of bound to backfire, right? Yeah, and so he played h6, bishop h4, I think, and d6. And this is the line he was preparing against Andrei in that final world cup final because Andrei can likes to play this sort of openings. And I was already out of book. You know, I, 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 I failed to, under, to understand the nuances of this position, and I've just continued playing um, just common sense moves. And then Black took over the initiative on g5, bishop g3, knight h5. So the idea is to potentially get the bishop pair. And again, even here, I could have played maybe more aggressive, like c4, knight c3, queen c2, to try to fight for the center. So what did he play? Bishop g7? Because he, Black is not forced to take on g3. He can take it any time. So he's not taking, otherwise, he you know, like, maybe give me more options. So he keeps this move for the future. Like, and here I think I played C3 or some ugly move like that. Oh, I did two knights yeah, right. Again, why? I mean, why not C4, knight C3? Perhaps I wanted to restrict this bishop on G7, not play C4. But again, I think I should fight for the, for the center in some way because the, the way I played, I played like way too solid. I mean, like just not fighting for the center, not fighting for the initiative. And I also assume that you were okay with uh, with making a draw or okay with- I mean, I'll be, yeah, again, it was very bad mindset. So yeah, problems begin with the mindset in this game. I think I played C3, I think. Yeah, yeah actually another interesting insight um, in these kind of positions, whenever like, you know, somebody's playing for a draw um, with the white pieces and just hoping to like, you know, shuffle and, uh, you know, uh, contain black, usually it doesn't work out well in practice. I think there's this famous game short against Gurevich. Uh, or mm -hmm. Gurevich Nigel Short, 1990. It might have been before your uh, your active chess time, but in 90. Oh, <laughs> even before your birth, yeah. Wow, young. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and I feel old. Um, so um, Short uh, uh, Gurevich Short. Uh, uh, it was Mikhail Gurevich, and Mikhail just needed a, a draw to like qualify to the next stage of the interzonal. He was playing against Nigel Short, and uh, Nigel Short uh, he played exchange French e4 e6 d4 d5 e takes d5 e takes d5. And uh, Gurevich is a really strong player, so they felt that you know he would have good chances in the, uh, in the, in the for the world title. And he ended up like you know basically playing you know uh, for a draw. And you know Nigel Short uh, basically took the initiative as black, beat him. And Nigel Short, uh, you know, if people remember history, he went on to challenge. Uh, he beat Karpov in a match, and he ended up challenging Kasparov. So the point is that it's hard to play for a draw even with the white pieces. And the best way to play for a draw is actually to play actively and uh, yeah that's a good point yeah that's what like most like like put like most strong like strong players give this advice usually to, to, to their students when you have to make a draw you, you should you should play like aggressively right yeah so yeah i played c3 again a bit ugly because white doesn't really fight with the center although i mean white could have gained more space and play c4 knight c3 and yeah was it like 22 or quincy 2 quincy 2 i think right? Yeah, Quincy mm -hmm. was playing the game. Yeah, just developing, yeah. But again, there is no plan. There is just absolutely no ideas. Just oh, sort of interesting because in this position, I would consider after A6 to play A4 um, just to hold back. Um, I don't know what's your opinion. You cast Perhaps, along. but I want to cast along for the A4. So if I play oh, A4 I and cast along, that doesn't make sense because Black will still play B5, not in the A file. Yeah. I see, I see. Yeah, I just want to cast along and the, the, therefore I didn't want to play like pawn most on the queen side. Yeah. And as you can see, Black play is consistent he develops pieces they, his moves make sense 
in my case, I just developed pieces like plays those typical like London systems, but without any other idea, I mean, right? So I just show total like misunderstanding. Actually, yeah, it's a good, uh, good point. I was about to say this is like a bad, London gone bad. It's not really London because it's like a what is it like a Tory attack, but mm -hmm. it's close enough to London because it's right, yeah. you know this diagonal. Yeah. So this is what happens when you play systems and you betray your style. I mean, so yeah. But what does he play? Rook B8, I think. Makes sense because he plays bishop b7, I have knight a5. That's the idea of knight b3. Right, so and I played knight a5, I think. Right. No, king b1 first, I guess. Uh, king oh, king b1. b1. Okay. Castles. He castles. No, and he no. still doesn't take on g3, as you see. He will... And now he, I think he takes. Now I played knight d2. Now the idea. Oh, no, no, maybe not yet. I still don't, don't, don't want to move the bishop. I think if I, after I play f3, then he will take on g3. Yeah. Okay. Hmm. Interesting. So here f5. And uh, now he play F3 and he's probably going to take. He has one thing is, moments, yeah, so it's yeah. like, no, it's funny. Now I feel sympathetic towards White's position. I feel like White is not that much worse, but I guess maybe the pieces are just slightly. No, I mean, I, mean, I had some chances lately. Yeah, yeah. It's, but overall, I mean, I look at the big picture and I see, I say that I just didn't play principled enough as I should play with White pieces. So F3, okay. he took. And yeah, yeah I, guess, I guess the idea is that White's going to play Bishop F2 if he doesn't take it. The Knight looks right. in H5. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. So now it makes sense. Knight mm -hmm. g3, h3, c5. Uh, right, okay. knight a5? I, no, I think so, right? Knight a5, yeah, yeah because it's threatening a fork. Um, I mean, the one idea that comes to my head, maybe it's, uh, can you just take and, uh, I guess take and play c4, uh, it's dangerous because his pieces get activated on the... Oh, yeah, bishop on g7 yeah. become very, very active, right? You so don't we, want that guy yeah. to become active. So knight a5, yes. rook b6. Uh, and here oh, was an interesting moment, which I missed. Yeah, f4, yeah, again, ugly move. Perhaps, but I want to keep the position closed against the bishop. Can you play G4 or is G4? I think there is a stronger move, which is E4, according to computer. Maybe E4, not... ah, E4, even, even simpler. I see, I see. It's a G4, E4. Is... And the idea is C4, bishop takes C4, uh, B takes oh, C4, wow. knight D2. C4. You cannot, Again. So, you, so um, you cannot just go to E2. You have to actually take. You must take. Is, is that the uh, idea? I mean, there is a, I mean if, I, if complications work fine for me, why not to take? And the idea is to play knight c6 and knight d6 after that. Oh, wow. Okay, I see. Well, this is a pretty, pretty cool. So yeah, I didn't B8, see that. I yeah, think computer yeah, showed. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. If rook b8, then knight c6, and if, say, rook b5, then you can do knight c6, and I guess queen has to go to e8 or f7. Let's just, or actually, the queen can also go to d6. I'm mm -hmm. oh, sorry, it could go to f6, f6. Um, but still, I have like knight d6 and e5. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I think uh, basically knight d6. Hitting the the rook and and e5. So basically, white has uh, you know three pawns for the piece and also uh, some some space in the center. So this looks actually pretty pretty decent for white. If not so much better, cool yeah, yeah. Oh, uh, maybe oh even much better. Yeah, it's possible. This is much better. Let's see. No, this is winning. E5. Oh yeah, oh, this, this is winning. Oh, e5 just wins the game because this I guess uh, yo this is obvious. It's tactics. So if queen g6, then obviously you can do 97. So this just yeah, wins. Yeah. yeah. So then maybe even queen f6 was. Wait. So this just wins or? Okay. Uh, I, Look how, oh, okay, okay. So better before that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, no, no. I think right here, after knight, wow, this is just crazy. After knight dc4, black has to find this crazy move, <laughs> d5 in this position. Mm -hmm. Basically, black has to say, you know, I'm giving up the exchange, no point in moving the rook. Actually, now, now the more I think about it, the more sense it makes. If rook moves or something silly like that, white's going to get a lot of tempos and get the d6 pawn and, and get more. So black has to say, you know, you, you want my exchange? Take it. But still, it says white is better in this position. Uh, hold on. No, why is it worse? No, I mean, now it's worse. Sorry, if Black gives up after playing d5 like this, uh, gives up the exchange, then then uh, then Black is still yeah. better. Well, yeah, but that, was, that was an interesting, yeah, continuation. But but the question is, can can someone find a move like d5? Uh, I think yeah, but it's just not a matter of finding. It's just a matter of elimination. If you move the rook, knight c6, knight d6, it just looks bad. I mean, so Black has to do something. Yeah, so d5 from this perspective, I, I think makes sense. Yeah, um, yeah. I see. Well, but. <laughs> So I didn't play that. Okay. I played so, F4 um, again. I, I just tried to keep yeah. the position closed. Maybe like oh, potentially open the H file, I think also. And what my opponent does, perhaps I underestimate it. So let's see. So you played F4, yeah. F4 and he played, uh, yeah, he just plays D5. Um, mm -hmm. He just gains more space in the center. It so almost they, feels like a stone wall, but uh, without uh, the dark squared bishop for white. So... Also, knight a5 is misplaced, yeah. So here I played an interesting yeah, idea. idea. So what, what does my opponent want? He wants to play c4 and then b4 and try to open the position. And my knight a5 will be just uh, cut off from the rest of the army, right? So I played an interesting move, b4, like a position of sacrifice. 
And if my opponent takes C before C before point before, perhaps I have some compensation on the C file. Before knight to DB3. So actually my pieces are now my piece are quite active actually. I control the C file, my knight on E5 is making sense, knight on B3 making sense, and so forth. No? But my opponent very quickly decided not to go into this position. So his intuition told him just don't. Yeah, do no, I think I, I bet the computer is going to say, yeah, okay, computer says slight advantage for black, but this is definitely not fun to play. So and yeah, rook C1.7 uh, yeah, makes sense. Right? Yeah, rook C1.7, yeah. So and is, again, yeah, no, no actually, very quickly, close, you huh? can see that uh, it's saying it's, it's about equal. And mm -hmm. uh, yeah, so, so I, I, I believe that because I think there's enough compensation here. And but oh, it's well, interesting. But I remember my opponent quite, quite quickly played move C4. So he's like, Huge like experience let him help him understand that he shouldn't win this pawn. I mean, I think like quite a lot of players would just play C before because it's a free pawn. But he immediately like realized that this is not the way to go. So C4 seems like actually when you like, say quite a lot of players, do you mean grandmasters included? I uh, I don't know. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, no, definitely the lower echelon for sure. They will just take a free pawn. But uh, no, I think yeah, will... grandmasters would play C4. Yeah, I, I don't know. Mm, I see. So you think even at the GM level, their guys will just take on uh, B4? Uh, uh, perhaps some, yeah. Yeah, I think maybe I think the most problem of here, will play C4, perhaps, yeah. Perhaps. yeah. Maybe the problem in this position is that after C4, um, it's actually not fully clear. I mean, it, the position looks blocked. Mm -hmm. so At least what clear. I want to say, not uh, many GMs will play it so fast. I mean, right? they will spend many ah, more time on C4 and they would then play C4. But he, I would remember he played quite quickly. So he discarded C4 very fast. I mean, okay. Oh, well, let's we'll see. Yeah, and so he played c4, and it seemed like I mean, can white make create some sort of fortress because position is closed, like as a bishop pair in close position, which is yeah, usually not a great thing for the side that has a bishop pair. So I had some like hopes here, although my knight five is really, really, really terrible, and I was afraid of ideas like bring the bishop to c7, queen d8, move the rook, and take on a5, win the pawn this way. But um, I failed to understand the big picture what my opponent was trying to do. Perhaps he already saw what he was he wanted to do, maybe even in this position. So let's see. So what do I play here? So rook, yeah, rook df1. Yeah, and I think he played g4 or not yet. Bishop d7. I think he's probably waiting. Bishop d7. Okay. Yeah. He's developing. Queen d1. Okay, now he plays g4. Yes. Yeah. The first time I saw this, I was thinking, wow, this is feels like a fortress. Like there's almost nothing, you know for him right. to attack but but i think uh, as alex pointed out there's like one interesting idea that uh the bishop can you know maybe come to d8 c7 and maybe queen goes to d8 and then the rook moves back and bishop can take the knight pawn takes and win a pawn that was mm -hmm. one idea and then alex i think you point out two other ideas in this position for black yeah i mean during the game i saw like bishop c7 queen d8 as a primary idea because i cannot keep the pawn i think i mean i can bring queen to a3 but he can still take and bring the knight to c6 and still win the pawn a5 so by doing that, he's guaranteed, guaranteed to win the pawn. Other ideas, I try to create a breakthrough on the uh, on the king side with h5, h4, perhaps. But and there was another idea which I, I presume he saw again right away, and maybe even earlier than that. And yeah, I, I think that's the, 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 the actual idea he played in the game. We can uh, let the leader try to guess it a little bit later. Yeah, yeah. So I thought it was h5, h4, bishop, seven, queen, d8 somehow. So let's see. Yeah. Happens. So I think one thing I wanted to point out in this position, um, and maybe I can try different perspectives. For maybe a uh, club player, it almost feels like the position to draw because there's not many uh, ways for black to break through. And uh, so this is actually where like, you know, strong grandmasters are really, I don't know, uh, they shine in these positions because they know like, you know, the few different ways to break through for black. And, um, and, and so they, 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 they will play for those lines. So I think this is where like, you know, difference understanding can be critical because uh, the lower echelon draw looks very likely at the, you know, top level. People, you know, have planned out all of the breakthroughs. So Black is, I don't want to say winning, but it's a good chance Black knows how to win because he knows all the different possible breakthroughs. Yeah, I mean, he has more tools in his arsenal, right? Based on his, like, huge experience, like world championship matches and so forth. Yeah, so I, I'm sure he already saw the idea. And now it also stands out to me, like, I've played this game. Like, back then, I just didn't see it until he played that one. Okay, so let's see. So King B2, uh, yeah, I guess uh, you can almost play any move. Actually, yeah, I'm just waiting. Have, White has no plan, to, no plan of improvement. I can play e4. e4 doesn't make any sense because I want to keep the position closed. Yeah, so White is just destined to wait passively. So rook f7. And then, and, and I think... Uh, Black is just trying to improve the position. Yeah, He's just trying to improve the position. Maybe bishop e8 and so forth. So again, I was just waiting. And my yeah, point maybe was one improving. interesting plan for you could mm -hmm. be to get the king to... I don't know. <laughs> the king side, but... 
Uh, but yeah, black has breakthroughs. Oh, okay. It looks like you're almost trying the plan. So that's that's good. Rook h7, uh, rook h2. Yeah so, I, I, yeah, so my opponent is trying to improve the position, his position in general. And I'm just, I'm seeing the small picture that my opponent will try to play h5, h4. And That's around the stage in the game, did you feel that you could hold it? Or what was your feeling? Uh, you know, as I don't remember. I know. Okay. But I, yeah, I thought I would try to maybe... Again, the major plan I saw was bishop a5, queen a5, and try to win the pawn. And then like, to create some sort of breakthrough on the queen said a5 before and so forth. No? So I thought, I mean, I would lose a pawn, but I would try to hold there. No? And, but yeah. Yeah, I'm actually, this is it. an interesting uh, moment. You probably played this because you want to stop knight h5. Um, like, let's say, like a dumb move. Uh, well, I still have knight 21. H5. Yeah, I still have 21. But... Yeah, like, let's say, if you do king d1, then there's knight h5. Uh, yeah, yeah. again, king d1 is not a good move. Uh, yeah, but I think, I, I, think I, stopped, I think rook h1, the idea to prevent h5, h4 again, just waiting. And oh, showing you're just break. stopping knight h5, so not only knight h5, or you, you yeah. can actually play h5, h4, and yeah. you're keeping rooks there. Okay, so now, yeah, and of course, he says, no, I'm not going to go for that plan. Knight d7, uh, mm -hmm. queen b2. Mm -hmm. Okay, h5. Yeah. So my opponent is doing his position. Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah. So, the, uh, so, so now comes this interesting breakthrough idea of uh, e5. Uh, when did you actually see this idea during the game? Well, okay. once my opponent played, I saw it on the board. Oh, God. So you didn't see it so, before? Yeah. So it was like a breakthrough. Yeah. So to expand your horizons, you need to play games like that to, to learn. Yeah. Right. Yeah, this is so, sort of a fascinating idea, basically. Um, maybe you can give your commentary first. Yeah, so I mean, again, black is much better. He has more space. He has a bishop here, and currently the position is closed. So he wants to open up the position. So I prevented move h4, and knight on a5 prevents a5 breakthrough. But e5 is uncontrolled by white pieces. It's controlled by two pawns, but he has his uh, piece sacrifice idea. So let's play like, the next two moves. So take, take, take. And queen e5, and black loves the piece. However, all of his pieces are like playing. I mean, they do what they, they want to do. And the dark squared bishop becomes a monster in this position because white pawns are in dark squared, like c3, e3, and g3. And so, although black is just a pawn down in this position, he's going to pick up the material on the next move. So I played knight f1, trying to guard the pawn on g3. And yeah, seems like I mean, that uh, uh -huh. Kramnik might have had these ideas because he plays the queen's game but declined as black, the Isipi Tartakawa, and those kind of positions before and this team of sacrificing on a3 maybe it also shows up in exchange exchange variation of queen's gambit and i think uh kramnik has beaten top all over someone like by sacking on e3 before like a piece for two pumps um probably i i, I didn't make that connection probably yeah i'm not sure about that game yeah i didn't study it yeah but yeah the idea is what i mean black sacrifices a then his piece for what? To open up the position because he has a bishop pair and white's pieces are misplaced that completely discoordinated. Like rooks on h2 and h1 are completely of, of the game. Knight on a5 is also out of the game and there are a lot of pawn weaknesses on dark squares. And so, yeah, my opponent just... just yeah, and I think the more we look at it, I mean, compared to the other games here, uh, it's basically two pawns. It's two pawns for the piece, right? I'm just making sure uh, One pawn for now, yeah. One pawn for now, okay, okay. So that's actually somewhat unusual. It's only one pawn for the piece. But he's probably going to get the e3 pawn. And as Alex points out, the knights um, and the rooks are misplaced. So um, he's putting one pawn for the piece as justification. He's going to probably pick up on e3 and have two pawns. But the bigger problem is that uh, there are even more weaknesses in the in the white position. Uh, yeah, but I, I don't think he wants to take a pawn on e3 right now because that will allow me to to trade my bad knight and get my pieces, my, my rooks, away, like away from the h file. So actually, he wants to take on c3, I think. No? I think he played bishop g7. Yeah, and this is sort of more or less forcing king d2. Uh, and if I play king c king d2, then my knight can never come back. And if knight get into the game, then my rooks can get into the game because the only way to activate the rook is to move the knight from f1. Right? So I didn't play king d2 because it just leaves my position completely hopeless. Maybe he can improve the position of, I don't know, maybe potentially like rook e6 or bishop h6. And so I just, so yeah, I wanted to, to play the yeah, engine. I'm just very curious yeah. what the engine assessment is. Yeah, it looks like yeah, it's just, it's just too. dim. Yeah, so no, but it just keeps improving the position. Like 20%, so. so it's not right. right. <laughs> oh, no, he took on c3, I see. Yeah. I mean, wouldn't it make sense for him to keep improving the position? Well, possible, but again, maybe he thought even that is winning. Ah, yeah. uh, I see, I see. So because he thinks he gets two pawns and, uh, yeah, okay. I see. Right. Again, this knight on a5 is not really a knight. It's certainly not worth three pawns, right? Again, like in the previous game, we saw knight on g7. So here's knight on a5, you know, to enter the game. So 
so technically white is a, a piece up, but yeah, in reality, I think white certainly is not a piece up, maybe material down, but two rooks down and light down. Yeah, this is yeah. pretty amazing. So bishop d1 and bishop c2, that's actually, yeah, that could be a plan. D1. I think you have to hack. Uh, did you consider knight? Yeah, I guess just you can't float. play knight d2. Yeah. Knight d2, yeah. the problem is rook e7. Uh, so bishop d1, rook e6. Yeah, and now he's immobilizing your knight. You can't move it anywhere. Uh, yeah. yeah, the problem is that uh, really the problem is not material up or down. The problem is black, white just doesn't have moves, it looks like. How I mean, the yeah. rooks get into the game? Right, exactly. So we just lost, yeah. So bishop g6. Uh, like, I'm even struggling to make legal moves here. Right. Uh, I guess you can just keep moving the king. Oh, no, you, okay, so you decided you want to give up that pawn. Yeah, that just yeah, it just collapsed. But it was lost anyways, right? Yeah. yeah, actually, I'm just wondering, is there any defensive chance here? No, it looks like the computer is uh, saying it's only 8% chance. Okay, wow, this is... Yeah. So again, not um, always a knight is worth 3 points, as you say. Or rook on h2 is certainly not worth 5 points. No, it depends on the concrete position. But yeah, just this is a dynamic game. So knight, uh, bishop f6, and... Uh, yeah, and I think I resigned some, some points. So, yeah. uh, rook h, no, at least you played a few more moves, rook h. Uh, no, d4, okay, okay, now he wants to play d3. Uh, I think I resigned. Oh, no, not yet, okay. So. Yeah, now I think you resigned. And, and I think, yeah, this is definitely uh, feels resignable because g3 is attacked, a3 is attacked, and he's also starting <laughs> d3 and c3. Uh, it just looks like a nightmare. Yeah, yeah. Um, all right, rook a3, yeah, it's just, yeah. Just looks oh, yeah, actually, yeah, rook, rook a3 is really strong too because rook a3 threatens. Um, just, yeah. Uh, right. yeah, actually, there's all kinds of threats after rook a3. You can implement bishop actually what just threaten, threaten on a1, c3, d3. And um, actually, now I'm thinking of the idea uh, could be rook a3 and d3. So, um, yeah, yeah, know. everything wins. Yeah, yeah, so yeah, it was a good experience for me. Put, in this uh, yeah, let's maybe put a null mode like rook g1. Just curious what the computer would say is the best. Yeah, it's on, uh, yeah, so yeah rook, 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 rook a3. Uh, okay, so rook f1, and now it just likes d3. And uh, yeah, so it's, it's sort of interesting because it's not exactly mate, but it's close enough because of c3. Yeah, so this is yeah, basically annoying. Um, but yeah, I think uh, this is a <laughs> crazy game, but of course, it's a game against uh, you know, uh, one of the pro pro was Karamnik world number one at the time? Uh, no, Carlson was number one since 2009 or 10, so it was 2013. Ah. So, yeah. oh, okay, I see. Yeah, so he was, yeah, 27, uh, 90-something, I don't remember. But it was a good experience, of course, it was a great experience. Yeah, yeah no, it's sort of a painful. Yeah, actually, one quick question. Do you feel pained by this game, or do you feel it was a great learning experience? Or is Yeah, it... I think it was great experience, yeah. That tournament I scored minus three, minus four, so I lost also against Giri, against Aronian, and against someone else, Eli Chao. And only drew when Chuk was black pieces. And beat the like, first board of Egypt, and drew... Ralph Mamedov, I think, and Henkin. So, yeah, I like, scored like minus three or minus four, I remember, in the first board. And I lost against all these Titans, except Lee Chow, perhaps. Yeah. So, I don't think he's a Titan, but he's just a strong player. Yeah. So, it was a great experience for me in that tournament. That was seven years ago, precisely. Yeah. About this. Yeah. But it, was, it's, uh, it feels painful like, to play against strong players and have, uh, you know, uh, basically a minus score. And were you able to react to that? Or, I mean, did, did you see it as a positive experience or did you see it as a, a painful I mean, experience? Now, I don't know. I mean, back then it was like like I played three months in a row, so I was tired of chess. And oh, at some yeah. point, I reached my peak at that, during this tournament, and then it went down after that, right? Because I also played Kat not Katara, but some other tournament, Alain Open or something, and I also lost rating there. Yeah, but yeah, just talking about this tournament, I think maybe it was painful, of course, to lose that much, especially like three in a row. I think I lost the last three rounds, but now I mean, or like sometime after the tournament, of course, I found this is a learning experience. Yeah. So it's, and did yeah, Kramnik yeah. say anything about this game? Uh, I don't remember. I don't remember. But uh, maybe we just briefly. Analyze, we, no, we didn't analyze, but I think just maybe very briefly discussed, right? Yeah. But I don't think we just said all oh, over the board. Yeah. Yeah, we oh, just briefly see, discussed okay, something. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. Well, so we can see the next pretty, game. Uh huh. Yeah. yeah, no, that's pretty good. I think I just wanted to quickly point out that, uh, you know, even if you lose a game, I'm really impressed that Alex is analyzing it and uh, he's. Uh, I don't want to say happy about it, but at least he's, uh, you know, openly analyzing the game and trying to learn from it. And, uh, you know, also appreciating his opponent's play, uh, which is great. If you want to become a strong player, sometimes it's not only about punching your opponent, you know, also need to get used to taking, uh, you know, punches Lessons. to your face or yeah, yeah. to your body and, and, and be happy about it. Because um, you can always feel like, hey, even though he lost his game and it's, uh, you know, uh, he learned a lot and he learned some new concepts. So sometimes... 
It's not about it's like free uh, lesson. Waiting. It was a free lesson. Yeah, free four that's hour a, lesson. That's a great attitude. Yeah, it's a free lesson from Kramnik. And yeah. the key point is sometimes you know it's okay because ELOs the rating is not everything. And sometimes the only way you can win is by losing. You you want to learn some new concepts like in this game. I mean, it was uh, pretty clear that you know the traditional sacrifice on ET was unexpected. But you know after the game you can study these sacrifices and uh, you know learn what to avoid. And that's uh, you know probably worth a lot in terms of long term improvement. Short term it's painful. You lose a game and yeah, you actually, know, this game just, is also painful because it's just it was just going downhill from the very beginning, right? But it's sometimes it's more painful when you get a good position and then you just scrap in the time travel. That feels more, more painful, I think. But when you're get, getting out late, I think you don't feel that bad in the end, actually. Oh, that's so funny because I actually feel it reverse. I feel like, okay. you know, if, if the game was, uh, you know, if I was winning and I misplayed it, I feel like, oh, God, at least I was winning. But in a game where I had no chances, I always feel uh, a little bit annoyed that, uh, you know, oh, my God, uh, you know. I just get, I'm annoyed at myself, but uh, your attitude is a lot better. And that's probably why you're a stronger player as well. Yeah, it just seems like very natural. Like, uh, yeah, if you're just getting outplayed, it seems like you deserve to lose, right? But when you got chance and you like blundered something or I don't know, like lost some time, then this just haunts you uh, years up. If, especially the tournament was important. But imagine this is the last round and you're winning. And happened to me like a couple of times. Like when I just blundered in the last move, and then I'm mean, instead of like tying for some second place, I mean I just like finished like twenties. Right? So yeah, those uh, losses and great higher uh, greater impact on me. Yeah. Anyways, let maybe let's see next game against Libyshevsky. I think that was also about positional sacrifice. Yeah. So 